Hey, what's up guys? Warlock here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have another Apex Legends video for you and I'm going to share my Season 7 tier list. Let's do it. Also, if you're new here and you want to learn how to improve your gameplay, get better aim and other Apex Legends tips, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Okay guys, to get things started, let's break down the criteria. So first and foremost is their legend loadout okay this is going to be how powerful each legend's loadout is in the game individually okay how powerful are their abilities tacticals passives ultimates number two guys is team compatibility and by far the most important one apex legends is a team-based game how well do these legends mesh mesh or aid your team or help out your team to attain victory and number three map adaptability this one's going to be really really different with olympus now before we had two maps to kind of help break down some legends were better on king's canyon the others were way better on world's edge now we have just olympus for right now so we're just going to be using olympus for the purposes of this video okay guys we're starting in d tier and i must say that with all the recent updates in Season 6 and Season 7, I don't think any legend deserves the F slot. Mirage! But I do think that there's still some legends that fall short when it comes to the rankings and overall power levels in Apex Legends. So, starting off first and foremost is Mirage, guys. Mirage is at the bottom of the list, as always. Okay, again, guys, I cannot stress this enough. Mirage. Okay, if you look at his loadout overall, it's pretty good. It's it's not a bad loadout for individual can you know play. Okay, he got buffs. He got some recent buffs. The decoys got buffs to 45 health, which can eat at least one wingman shot, which is kind of nice. But overall, his loadout just doesn't do much. Once people start to learn how to identify which you know Mirage or Bamboozle is the real one, especially with his ultimate, it just doesn't make him a viable legend in Apex. People adapt way too fast, and it's very easy to tell which one is the actual Mirage. As far as team compatibility, guys, it's among the worst in the game. Let me say that again the worst in the game. And I don't know why people argue with me about this. What does he bring to the table as far as to help the team? People say, oh, well, he can go invisible and he can re revive your team and respawn your team invisible. Well, he has those lights on his arms that show where he is. And on top of that, any average or good player is going to hear where the res is. So his invisibility is irrelevant. Last guys is map adaptability. In Olympus, I think he doesn't do too bad. With his bamboozles along with his ultimate being able to get invisible and just run away, the large wide open areas and some of the levels in Olympus do benefit mirage in that way so this is probably the best category for him next up guys in the d tier is rampart as much as i really like rampart her and some of the other legends in this list just haven't made an impact on apex now with that said i do think it's really cool her loadout is very very nice i think it's a cool way to use her in a different aspect but i'm on olympus i just don't think she works very well and wait before you guys get excited about the whole rampart sheila on top of the you know behind the trend or trident mini car it is very very cool and i think it's something that makes a really nice highlight reel but let's be honest guys unless your team is coordinated really well and you can get some kind of accuracy with that the trident moves too much and you as players you take too much damage when you're being shot at to make sheila the mini gun on the back of the trident effective in any way but when you look at her loadout and what she can bring to the team, her defensive setup isn't too bad. It can work. It just is only going to work in some given situations. Last up in the D tier, guys, and I really hate this because he was getting such a big buff, is Octane. Okay, Octane is the last legend in the D tier, and I'm going to tell you why. Horizon. Season 7 Horizon comes out, and she lays the complete smackdown on Octane, okay? Everything that makes Octane great, she just trumps tenfold, okay? Okay. So Octane's loadout is actually really awesome. He got some major buffs coming into Season 7, which is amazing. His stem uh, regen is actually balanced perfectly. I think it's the right amount. You hit a stem and you can stem all the way across the map and still regen uh, your health relatively fast. I think that his jump pad is very good, but again, compared to Horizon, her gravity lift is just much better for air control and to get to the high ground a lot easier and faster. Okay, now as far as what he can bring to the team, again, you do have the jump pad. It can help, especially in public games where you throw the jump pads down. You can get to the higher grounds. You do got the double jump, which I think is nice. It's great to help get teammates out that have been knocked down. But again, the air control is just really bad. It's easily to tra it's so easy to track guys inside of Apex Legends. You can just down players on that as opposed to Horizon's gravity lift, which just shoots you up very fast. You can get away very quickly. So 
Octane, as much as I wanted to, he was going to be in C or tier, guys. I'm telling you, he would have been. But Horizon just trumps him in every way possible. So he's in D tier. Now, coming up into C tier, guys, is Loba. Now, let's talk about the good things for her. Her ultimate, Black Market, huge buff. She starts it off at 50% when you start the game. So you can get it relatively quickly in these areas. And it opens up all the loot. And on top of that, you can have unlimited ammo. You can just grab all the ammo you want. You're like a little squirrel just grabbing ammo and storing it for the winter. But outside of that, she doesn't do a whole lot. I wish her tactical would have been a lot better, guys. You know, her animation takes way too long, much longer than race animation. And the fact that it takes so long, you can't really move while you're doing it. Her tactical is just a wide open here, shoot and kill me. You can't really get away. If you use it like strategically, then you can get to high ground. You can get inside places very well. But outside of that, it doesn't really do nothing. Now, with that said, her map adaptability is probably one of the best because of her tactical. She can get around the map, get to these high places. But again, you want to use it very, very strategically so you don't get shot and killed. The last legend in C tier, guys, is Crypto. Okay, Crypto's moving up into C tier this year. I think he, or this season, I think he stayed in C tier, C tier in our last uh, video for season six. Had a bunch of buffs for his drone as far as being able to revive enemies. And since he's part of the drone class, you can use his drone to activate the recon beacons to get, you know, where the map, the next zone's going. So I think that's really, really good for his loadout. His ultimate hasn't changed too much. It's just changed as far as like the damage it deals, what it can destroy, which is more of Watson and Crypto's stuff, or not Crypto, but um, Watson and uh, Caustic's traps, which is really, really nice. The whole rework for him was to help, you know, teams be able to push for, you know, these buildings that everybody's held up in. But again, that just kind of fell short. It worked for a brief time with TSM. Shout out to TSM. But it, everything got quickly nerfed because of Revenant. So Crypto kind of just fell short. Now, when it comes to his, what he can bring to the team, I think Respawn had it, had him in a good place to be the ultimate recon character in the game. His passive allows you to be able to see and just see where enemies are as long as they're within the drone. But again, that is stagnant. One of the worst things about crypto is that unless you are a very, very good crypto and, you, and you're playing with a team that gives you the ability to time stuff perfectly like TSM was using him. Every Wraith main, or excuse me, Crypto main that I've played with, they, they're always so far behind in fights, just moving around the map because they want to access their drone. Okay, they want to do all this cool stuff in the drone, which is great. But when it comes to fighting, if you don't know what you're doing as far as how to use them, he's out of the fight, which can make him a very, very vulnerable legend when it comes to your team. So therefore, he's in C tier. On to B tier, guys. Okay, we're going to start with our, you know, cybernetic assassin, Revenant. So let's look at his loadout. His loadout, silence, along with his passive being able to climb buildings, is kind of nice in, on this map. I think it definitely benefits him more on World's Edge because of the, the levels of the buildings, but it does work here. His silence ability is amazing. It's among the best passives in the game. Silencing for a minute is insane when you're in a gunfight. And then his ultimate, again, guys, his ultimate is still very good. It has a limited range, but I think a lot of good to average players have adapted to revenant the revenant push and can really identify when a team has him and when they're going to use him and just counter it now what he brings to the team guys is just one of those things he's not a necessarily a really bad legend or he's not necessarily the best legend that you could have on the team i think he's just very balanced when it comes to that all his abilities do help your team out in some way map adaptability and how he can get around he's kind of vulnerable just like crypto is they can't really do a whole lot now if he's around buildings in some of these areas that are on olympus then he can climb up and use his ability to get away Next up in B tier is everyone's favorite commander and my favorite legend in Apex, and that is Bangalore. Although she may be easy to use, she's very balanced. I think everything in her loadout does help in some way. Double time with the increased speed when you're being shot at not only is good for your team, but individually it allows you to move around a lot faster and avoid gunshots. Her smoke, among one of the best tacticals in the game, and with Olympus being such a wide open space, it makes her smoke so so good guys i can't not stress how good her smoke is on olympus and with her ultimate again it did get a reduced time from eight to six seconds as far as detonation but other than that her ultimate doesn't really do a whole much it's more meant to be a repositioning and kind of just hey back off and we'll reset the fight and then get back into it but i still think her loadout is pretty good now what she can bring to the team guys again all her abilities are very useful she's not a bad legend to have on your team and she's definitely not the worst legend to have on your team I think it's just she's just a really balanced legend and she's useful on any team. Next up in the B tier, guys, is Watson. She has fallen a little bit, mainly because of her map adaptability. 
she is just out in the open struggling to get some cover she cannot do a whole lot in this game okay or on on olympus i should say but with that said her loadout is still very very powerful all the fences that you can use three pylons although they only last a minute but three pylons to help recharge shields and block grenades is just so powerful i think uh, you know what you can bring to the team it's more of the end game and setup kind of way or definitely high end you know competitive way but watson can set up anywhere all her fences work all they do increase damage and increase slowdown now and her pylons last for a minute and with the the double stack as far as ultimate accelerants she's still very very powerful last up guys in the b tier is caustic man my boy caustic took a big hit this season okay his loadout is still very good. Caustic Traps still rocking at six. They do an increased damage. You got to battle for him to either destroy him or set him off. Uh, his ultimate gas grenade is still very, very powerful in closed in spaces, doors, buildings, you know, corridors, anything like that to help push stuff. And then his passive being able just to see through all the gas is a great way to use in some areas of the map. Now, what he can bring to the team is that ultimate defense. Setting up just like Watson again, guys, with the traps and then his gas grenade makes him still one of the best legends. But again, along with his map adaptability, Caustic on Olympus just cannot do it. He now, moving on to A tier, guys. Moving on to A tier. The first one that we have up is Lifeline. Lifeline has been in A tier ever since her rework back in Season 6. Her rework is absolutely amazing and one of the most annoying legends to play against in the game. Okay, not only does she have the health drone, which can help heal your team over time, she has the drone where she can revive and continue to fight. Okay, and then of course her ultimate, which drops a supply package to help your team out, not only with attachments, but uh, you know, the utility gear as far as shields and health. Okay, so or syringes, med kits, etc. So overall, her kit is still very powerful. Now, she is the ultimate support legend in Apex, which makes her the best you know, team compatible legend in the game. She can play with anybody, okay? And this is the same thing for Caustic, Watson, and Bangalore. They can all play with anybody. I think all those legends are really, really good on any team. Now, again, very, you know, she's not very mobile, so she is going to be stuck out in the open as far as the map with Olympus. But I think with her shields and being able to re, you know, regen people or revive people and those shields pop up, I think she does okay. But again, just like the majority of the legends on the list, guys, they just don't fare well on Olympus. Next up in the A tier, guys, is our big man, Gibby. His loadout is very, very good. You have his arm shield, you have his bombardment, and you have his dome shield. With dome res, is very fast. It's just as fast as lifeline, uh, but only inside the dome. And then, of course, you have bombardment, which is the best ultimate in the game as far as team play and it definitely at the high pro competitive level. So what he brings to the team is everything. He is a support legend, he is a offensive legend, and he is a defensive legend. Gibby can literally do it all. The arm shield helps him poke out and scout. You have the dome shield to help as far as defense and then bombardment can use both offensively and defensively so team compatibility gibby is one of the best that you could ever have on your team his map adaptability hasn't changed on any map the fact that he has his dome shield allows him to play at any spot on any map and even in the open because you can just drop a shield and heal up fast enough to then continue to move so gibby is good on any map that apex has put out now guys the last legend inside of a tier is horizon wow what can i say about this legend we just made a video which i'm going to link a card above guys it's how to play horizon in season seven make sure to check that out but horizon is by far just a killer and stellar legend everything that she can do as far as her loadout with when she lands from a high spot not taking that delay as far as moving is gives you so many milliseconds on an enemy which can make or break the difference in a fight her gravity lift, oh my god, can get you anywhere in the map and get you anywhere fast in the map. Like, it just it just shoots your team up into the air and you can get to high ground so quick. Not only that, you can sit at the top of her gravity lift and shoot down on teammates. Or not teammates, but enemies. Her, her abilities, her ultimate black hole. Now, it does affect your team, but if you use it wisely, it sucks everybody in. Those are easy, easy shots and easy ways to push a team. When it comes to her team compatibility, guys, she is... She can be put on any team. She can do it all. She can be your mobile character as far as her lift to get you into spots. 
Her ultimate is very good for defense and offensively. And her passive is more individually. It's kind of like Bangalore's. But overall, Horizon can be played on any team. And she can be your mobile legend on any team, which is crazy. Now, with Olympus, her ability with Gravity Lift does wonder. She can get anywhere and you know on the map and get out of any you know spots especially in the open terrain like throwing that down shooting up and just flying it makes you a very very hard target to hit all right guys into s tier you already know who's here so we're going to start with the newest one into s tier which happened last season and that is bloodhound bloodhound with the scout ability and being able to just scan anywhere for not only a longer duration but a farther duration and when an enemy is hit it lasts for four seconds i believe so you can see where an enemy's at the passive isn't so relevant i don't think nobody really ever uses the tracking as far as the footprints too much but the fact that you can get the information of knowing when a team was somewhere and how long they had been there is valuable information bloodhounds ultimate is one of the better ones in the game and then as far as the individual part side of it you move incredibly fast. You get that Bangalore speed buff, which allows you to move around quickly on the map and not only catch maybe enemies that are running away, but also give you a huge advantage in a 1v1 fight. So make sure you win your ones. Now, as far as bringing it to the team, like I said, guys, best recon character in the game, best character to get all the information and identify where teammates or enemies are at with all the scanning. So Bloodhound on any team is going to be very valuable in any way. Pubs, ranked, you know, high level competitive play in any way. This is going to be one of the best legends in the game to have on your team. Now, as far as the map adaptability, guys, Bloodhound with all her glory is great, but unless you're in her ultimate, that's the only way you're going to get away from teams in Olympus because of all the open areas. And I know that's not a way you would want to use her ultimate, but it is a good way to use it, especially if you're caught out in the open. Pop ult, run away, get to cover, heal, re engage the fight. So she does okay on olympus as far as map adaptability guys now on to our next legend in the s tier now let's get on to wraith guys we're going to talk about wraith and then we're going to talk about the legend that redeemed himself in season seven to get back to s tier you guys know Wraith's abilities one of the best reposition best savior best overall individual powers in the game being able to phase being able to portal being able to just know when people are trying to shoot at you i mean wraith does everything on a just an astral plane level just just so much better better than any legend in the game guys now as far as the team she is the best legend to have on your team she can do everything guys her loadout is among the best and she can do and she's the best teammate to have in the game guys she can do it all revive teammates with portals get them to safe places reposition get in and out of gibby bubbles or ultimates you know get your team to safe spots now map the adaptability guys she can do it all. She she's very she can do anything on any map, guys. No map is really going to hinder Wraith in any way because of her phase. Her phase on top of her portal, she's going to move so much faster for 4 seconds. And even for her phase, normally with a good Wraith player is going to get to cover where they're going to be able to heal, re-engage the fight and then, you know, just keep mushing on. But there's no no place in Olympus that's going to really hinder Wraith or on World's Edge or King's Canyon. So, any map Wraith is going to be fantastic at. Now, guys, on to Pathfinder. The last legend in the list, guys, and has redeemed himself all the way back up from, I believe, the B tier is where we had him because they nerfed him so bad the last few seasons. Pathfinder got a huge buff, but I will say this. As far as his loadout, his hitbox was hit big time in Season 7. Because of his big buffs, Pathfinder does have a little bit bigger hitbox, so it does make him a little bit easier to hit, but I don't think that's a you know much of... A problem especially on olympus because he's the best legend to have on this map okay his grapple is very balanced now his grapple is going to allow him to be able to zip around the map grapple here and i think the average player that uses it now with the buff that it got is around 25 seconds which makes it very very balanced if you guys don't know when you grapple the further you go the longer it sets the timer so most people have a resawn or you know recharge rate of about 25 seconds the maximum again guys is 35 seconds but that that would mean that you're grappling at the maximum distance passive as always is really good hitting the recon beacons lastly his zip line best mobile character in the game as far as getting your team to anywhere on the map any place doesn't matter can get you anywhere so in the end pathfinder so happy to have him back inside of the s tier and on top of the apex legends tier list so 
that's going to do it for the list today guys thank you guys so much for watching today's video i really hope that you do enjoy the list let me know what you think about it down in the comments below guys hit that like button guys if you did enjoy today's video it takes about two seconds and it does help me with the youtube algorithm and also guys hit that subscribe button and turn on notification guys so you can get more awesome videos like this for me warlock as always guys stay gaming and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace